but we've made it down to the coast. We've done a short walk really from the trucks, but we're down there and there's no signal, which is lovely. We're cut off from society. If we're gonna get baited up, we've got mackerel, we've got sand eel, we've got some ragworm, and we're gonna see what we can catch. I think Hazy might be going for a swim as well, so that'll be interesting. This place is awesome, look at it. I wonder when they finished quarrying this out, you know? Look how far back it goes. Look how it's held together. Is that there as an intentional support? Yeah, they leave them here. Uh, there's a little stat, look at that, there's a golem cave. <laughs> -hoo. I've been here once before and well camped and it is incredible. You don't get the sun rot, you get sunset over this side, but you don't see it too much, but the sunrise over there, east, is amazing. So I've got a light spinning set up with me today, just a small 1000 size reel, five piece like travel rod, so it's a, it just comes in five separate pieces in this little case. <clears throat> just handy, very, very lightweight, that's why it's only light spinning gear, but it's handy for when you're hiking kind of far distances. It's the same one for those that watched the Lake District video where I went up with Hazy and we went fishing in one of the tarns. It's the same rod as that. And I, it's, to be honest, it's the, it's the rod I take everywhere with me. It will be able to handle big fish. It just wouldn't be able to cast very far. So there's the rod in its five pieces. I'll just put it together and then I'll explain what I'm gonna put on the other end. On the, on the reel I have it's not blue fishing line, it looks like blue fishing line, but what it actually is, is what's called braid. Uh, and this is for bite detection. So I can feel the bites a lot better with this uh, compared to normal fishing line, which is, you know, nylon monofilament. That's got a lot of stretch. You can't feel the bites as much, but you can feel the bites and you can set the hook a lot better with braid. However, it's not very abrasion resistant. So against rocks like this, when it rubs against the rocks, it's gonna snap. So in order to counteract that, you have to put on what's called a leader. Uh, and I'll show you what I'm using for that now. So this is a leader material. You can use nylon, which is standard fishing line, or you can use fluorocarbon, which I'm using here. And that just helps because it's, well, it's, it's meant to be almost invisible underwater to fish. So the way it reflect, refracts the light. So I use about a meter, probably a meter of that. And I'll tie that to the end of the braid here. And you can either use a swivel or you can just use uh, uh, what's called an Albright knot, which I won't show you, but it's on TA Fishing, the YouTube channel. So earlier today, we got some ragworm from the tackle shop. I'll just zoom in on those for you. These are like a staple bait for wrasse fishing, just general beach sea fishing, mixed fishing around here in England, well, and the UK, British Isles. Um, they range in size. We've got what they prob you probably won't be able to see, but I'll try and get it for you. They're quite aggressive. They're quite an aggressive species, but there's two little you see them. Ready, here come the fangs. There, two fangs, can you see them at the front? Those little fangs. He's trying to get me now already. He's trying to tuck back to bite me, but that is their fangs. And that's where you've got to put the hook right through the mouth, the front of the mouth. Otherwise they'll just nip you with those fangs. When I say fangs, they're probably not like, they're probably little teeth, but if you can see them there, they're pretty, pretty interesting worms. Lots of wriggling movement. Squeeze them quite hard. Get the fangs to come out. He's got his fangs out there, you can see. And then straight through the mouth. And then you literally feed him around the hook. And keep feeding the body of the worm. It's a long shank hook, because it's a worm hook. And you want to keep that hook in there until he gets right round the bend. Push him around, and then when you get to the eye of the hook, pop him over, squeeze it. Hold, you can hold the actual the hook there. You go, they're quite slimy after a while. Just hold it there, and then pull him over the eye. There, he just pops off, and then just double tap, tuck, kind of a couple of wrap a couple of times. Now this this long tail like that's not going to be good because the wrasse are just going to and peck away at this tail. And I'll get bite detections, but I won't know there's one on the hook. So you snap the worm 
about here, just snap him in half. Save the tail end. Don't put it right back in with the other worms because it does kill them. And that way, he's still wriggling away. Seems a bit cruel, but you know, it's fishing. This is, this, this is life. And uh, yeah, now you've got a bit of smell and scent in the water as well. This is a drop shot rig, so this part goes to my fishing rod. There's my hook. Then at the bottom, about three feet down, is a lead, cannonball lead. So that's the setup. It's a vertical fishing technique. Right, I'm switching over to the head cam now. Just uh, to make it easier for me to fish, I need my hands free. Dustin's got a bait in the water as well. Hazy's actually in the water swimming. So hopefully now we'll get you some underwater footage of the wrasse swimming around in their natural environment. But let's go catch a fish. Colors on that. Wow. Stunning, aren't they? Unbelievable. Pretty fish. Spikes, quite a few spikes. Oh, saved him. Oh, look at that. He's gone in the. <laughs> What's the chance? What's the... <laughs> well, I tried to stop him hitting the rocks with my foot, so he hit my boot. Oh, he's actually gone. There he is. <laughs> Can't believe I dropped him in that. Sorry, mate. Swim to Uncle Hayes. Good work. Well done. We're in. This landscape is incredible. Look at all these rock pools. Look. Look at these rock. There's even little fish in them. There'll be crabs in these as well. We'll have a look later. Why well, you have a long shank hook? So you just wind that worm around that shank of the hook. There we go. I'm actually going to keep this tail on, but double raft, double hook it. When you're fishing with bait like this, worms on a sunny hot day, you want to keep them fresh as possible. So you want to just keep them covered so they don't escape. Otherwise, they uh, they go f go a bit off. Lovely markings, isn't it? They just blend into the rocks Useful. and the kelp. See you later. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a good evening. Look That's at that great, sun. Man. Another wrasse. You've got another? Yeah. Better, bit, bit, bit of a better one. Look at the colours on it, man. So nice, aren't they? The markings. Yeah. Can, he, can he sting you? Yeah, he's got... Well, no, spikes. I'll show you. Under there. If you feel that, it won't hurt. Just that. There's a spike if you push back on the fin. Oh, yeah. Little fin spikes there. There'll be yeah, gill spikes, you. like perch. Gill uh, and the top. There. there. Oh, just rub your finger there. Look. It doesn't hurt. Just... That's the sort of spikes. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, they, yeah, that's their defence. Come on. Yeah, that's a ras. There we go. That's been down in amongst the. Yeah, the the, look at that. If you hook up, it's like, it's huge. It's <laughs> yeah, oh, look at that. It's probably because it's foul hooked, so that's why. <laughs> hey, that? fish is fish. Yeah. Right, well, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> we have what looks like a bit of a crocodile. It's a gar, but man. It's a garfish. Look at that. And it, this one's been hooked pretty deep. He is bleeding already from his gills a little bit. So it's dinner time. Yeah, because he's deep hooked, we know he can eat it. We're not going to throw it back and it will die. No. We're going we're gonna to knock it on the head and put it in the, in the pan. Oh, beauty, mate. That tonight. Great effort. This is the witching hour for fishing. I, I'm oh, surprised yeah. this late in the year, we're at end of October. There are summer species. Yeah, exactly. That's why I was thinking mackerel should be here. Dustin's just got the garfish and I'm just foraging, whoops limpets at the moment so these are just limpets which are a sea snail 
species of sea smut snail which cling to the rocks and they're, they're quite they're quite well kind of camouflaged to the rocks around here they match the color they're <laughs> getting bites uh, and to get them off they're really really tough and strong when you step on the rocks they'll feel the vibration of your feet and then they glue themselves and suck to the rock as, and it's really quite tough to get them off so what you need to do is sneak up on them I say sneak up on them, obviously they're, they're a sea snail, they're not going to see you, but they will feel the vibration, so try and creep up to them. And you use a rock, and where they're stuck to the side, like this, if you imagine on my hand, you just come from above or from the side and give them a short, sharp tap, and it will get them off. And that's what I've been doing. And what you have to be careful is when you then put them back down, is if you put them back on the rock like that and you walk off and walk away, they'll just suck to the rock again. So when you're foraging for these, make sure that you... If you're gonna you know, put a load down on the ground and then move off, keep them like this so that the foot, that's called the foot, is facing upwards, so they're facing upwards. So we're gonna add these to the garfish so we've got some fresh forage. There's not much calories in these and they're pretty damn chewy, uh, but they're gonna add to our gourmet sea dish anyway. So a couple of limpets, they will also stick to each other's shells. So far I've only got a handful um, and we won't have loads, we'll only have a couple of each, so we'll probably get another another few and then we'll uh, hopefully try and get some more fish. Okay, I've changed my rig, it's night time. We now wanna fish on the bottom and try and catch something. There's a good chance we're gonna catch a dogfish. Just got a, a, a mackerel fillet uh, on a large hook, threaded onto a large hook, and yeah. And this a is, nice lead at And the a bottom. nice lead. And yeah, the idea is that the lead is on a weak link and we know it's really rocky. So when this lead falls on the, on the, on the seabed and then gets caught, what'll probably happen is it'll get caught in between some rocks but there's a weak link this line is weaker than these two lines which means when I then pull it what will happen is this line will snap and hopefully will be engaged with the fish and then yeah, reel we'll her be, in. Well it's a very common method over here in the UK because we get such snags when we're fishing and where that we're fishing, sort of fishing it's really rocky yeah it's good and we are what we're like, we're like 30 40 feet up yeah we're probably really more than up. that we're really high up on these cliffs, so it's a pretty hefty cast you've got to do out there. Yeah, I've got to really whack it out. That's a big drop. There. That is a huge drop. Be careful, mate. That's your right at the edge. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's Conga City, that. That's what I'm talking about. Conga City. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm uh, just buffing my knife up because when you come to the coast, this. You got a bit rust, didn't you? This steel day? gets a bit rusty, so. Just That's a, a carbon one, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, SE3, Yeah. but it's pimped up. You've done something customised. It's a new it. handle, a bit of a cobra weave on it. And they don't come with a 90 degree on, so I've put a 90 degree on there so we can shoot. Oh uh, yeah, good. And we've got a great setup going here on the cliff. We got. We did bring kindling. We didn't find wild wood out here. We brought some kindling because we're on the coast and there's no, no trees, no wood here. So it's going to help us cook up some food and get some warmth. Okay, this is a little light like a, a bit of a glow stick what you do with these is you crack them crack them a few times it's glowing already glowing already then you shake them a bit and they allow you to see what happens on your rod tip at night time so now there i can put that there i'll put my rod back 
in the rod holder, which is just <laughs> two big rocks holding it in. Oh yeah, yeah. It's my new um, cake grill. Yeah, my last one lasted three years. Yeah. And it's only just failed. It's a good size, that actually. It's like perfect. thin, but good size. Perfect for me. Yeah, I've got some proper pin teeth, though, isn't it? It's like it wouldn't, it wouldn't crush you. They haven't, they haven't got a jaw pad. I know what I do. Like if I was in the wild, I'd use it's it as a clothes peg, like or something. You know, to hold yeah, your clothes yeah, on yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and them. there's also one in America called Ballyhoo, uh, which doesn't have the the. It has. So imagine there's no bottom jaw here. It's right. like a. It's like the bottom of the mouth is there, and this is the spike coming out. So it's like a marlin. Oh, it's just got a yeah, but bit. it looks exactly like that. But it's a, like a marlin. But it's called a ballyhoo. I've just measured yeah. up where. Oh oh oh, 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 oh! Go, 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 go! Let's go! Hit it! Hit it! Hit it! Hit it! Yeah, boy, gone. Got to be. No. No. Oh, that bell was ringing. Oh. That was going. That was a bite. Definitely. That was a good fish. That was a good take as well. Yeah. I don't know. I it got mark. taken. No. no. I think we give it. Give it some. Um, that Fine. went though. That, that was a... that was a doggy, I reckon. That was a dogfish. Woo! It's so oh, exciting man. when it goes. We've got a a star. Well, we call them star lights or rod lights, whatever. They're a great indicator for at night time. And what you what you'll see is the the rod tip going. Yeah. Rather than be there with your head torch on. These are great but annoying if you're <laughs> fishing next to whoever's got one of these bells. They just allow you to just hear. It's just, a visual and an audio. It. You don't have to sit there watching the rod tip. Yeah. They, you know, it allows you to. You almost carry on like we we were, we were preparing food, we were cooking. Yeah. And then um, bell goes, and we weren't watching the rod tip. We haven't been watching the rod tip all night, really, because. And then got you a look, bell. you're drawn to the rod tip, aren't you? So you hear the bell, then you look at the rod tip, yeah. and that was hammering. I reckon that was a dogfish. All right, I'm gonna bang get it, it out there. Out. Oh, oh, almost hit France. <laughs> <laughs> right, so here's that garfish. We've. Taking the head off, we gutted it. We've now measured out roughly how big. So we've got a grill to go over that, and we're probably only going to get three, <laughs> maybe four. Actually, well, three. So if that's the width, we've cut them down to the length we want them. So I'm just going to go halfway through with my knife. And I do like my knife. I am a bit precious. So by turning the fish over means I never come in contact with the rock. So there's one there, there's one here. What we'll do after is we'll just give them a little rinse. We did bring a bit of bottled water with us. Cut down through there and through this. There we are. I've we, not... we did some foraging earlier as well. Yeah, we've got a bit of rock samphire here. Yeah. So we're thinking about stuffing the fish with a little bit of rock samphire. And that'll just give it a little bit of something, won't it? Hey. Look, we've rinsed the fish. We're going to peel off some of these lovely fresh green shoots, stuff them into the fish, put them on the grill. Oh, yes. Cliff top fishing, you cannot beat. Cliff top. The best bit just... was when um, that went off there. Yeah, 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 yeah. that bell. Oh. It's the fact it could be a conger. A big Are you ready for the grill? Conger. Yeah, it was going, it was going. Uh, do you know what? Uh, if we had, we should have bought a lemon. That would have been great. One lemon. One Keith. Five minutes, give them a turn. Yeah, five minutes. Uh, we regulate the heat. This is Hazy's bush box. Yeah, we man. regulate the heat through there, don't you? Put some wood in there so we can uh, get some flame going if we need to. Flame we shouldn't do, there. there's quite a bit of embers in there, so that should. Yeah, I'd say They're 15 minutes. They're already starting to go. Yeah. Look at that. Catch and cook. I think when that flame dies down. Yeah, put them back on. Just leave the heat. Golden Gar! Look at that! There you go. <laughs> there you go, Mike. Oh, look at that presented. Look at that presentation. No, no. Nothing on the presentation, but we, we, I guess we didn't have a plate. And these are edible. That's so we it. Thought, let's just use these. Let's chow down. The thing about cooking them in sections whole is that the bones mainly stay together. Yeah. But that meat was really meaty. Look at that. Yeah, look how green they are. They've got green bones. 
really, like other than oh, rock samphire inside. Just rock samphire. Imagine lemon on that, a bit drizzle of lemon. Mm. Imagine truffle on it. I was expecting the wrong rock samphire to bring out a bit more, a bit more flavour. There's a delicate flavour. There's a little infusion of rock samphire. I was expecting to be because it is quite potent. Mm. Yeah. Also, can yeah. you say barren green backbone, please? I did, and then put a photo of barren green back on it. <laughs> Ignore that guy. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, 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 what? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, what the? F yes. What the? F let him eat it. Let him eat it. Let him eat it. That might be tide. That might be waves. Wait, Th that wait, little... Right. Go, 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 go. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it hard. Is he in? Come on. Are you serious? No. Wait. No. Come on. You're in! Yeah. You're in, boy! Yeah, buddy! Look at that rod bend! Woo! Yes, Dustin! Mate! Ah. Right, look right, at so that I'm rod! Get this, so I want to try and get the bell off. Uh, yeah, give it here, give it here. No, 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 it's not a doggy. What is it? What, what is have it? we got? What? Look at this. There's me holding Dustin, holding Mike, holding a fishing rod, pulling, trying to get this bass onto a, onto a rock that shelf down there. There's more food than we could possibly eat. Yeah. This is exciting. I'm gonna touch the rod. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's alright, he's still there, he's still there. Oh my god, I thought he'd come off. Away, away from that gap. Yes, the... wait till he flush. Look at the size of that thing. That's a big fish. Dude, look at the size of it. And that's far down as well. <gasps> right, we're hooked on to the biggest bass I've seen in my life here. Guys, <laughs> come off. Come off. Lost him. Come off. He's come off. Mate, that was never gonna. That was amazing, but that was. That's it. That was a huge He's come off. Fish. He's come off. We've lost him. Well, we lost that last one, which was a good bass. So we've rigged it up. I put another mackerel head on it. And fingers crossed, we're gonna get another fish. Yeah. Hopefully. So let me just explain to you guys what happened. Well, carnage happened, I think. That's, it was yeah. utter carnage. Bedlam. It was absolute bedlam. So after we turned off the camera, eventually, sorry about the blurred footage there, uh, I then went and grabbed the... Hazy gave me the uh, kiddies crab net. <laughs> we decided to chuck that off the edge of the cliff. Good job, idea. Good to, to see if it would uh, get down to this bass, which was an absolute beast. Uh, unfortunately, the crab net then got... The crab net got wedged in a gap. So we couldn't pull it up, we couldn't drop it down. So it was up to us to try and lift this monster bass up off the uh, the top of the sea. It was a good fish though. It, honestly, it was a good bass. I know fishermen tend to lie about fish weights and everything like that, but this was this was pu pushing double figures for Scouts a bass. on it, it was double figures. It was, it was, it was a, it yeah, was it was an absolute weird. monster. And we down. just, we, we didn't even think about camera work or anything because we just wanted to try and land it. At one point, <laughs> yeah, Hazy did. If you want to see actual camera work, go to Hazy's vlog. <laughs> yeah. But uh, at one point, I was holding Dustin's jacket. Hazy was holding no, my no, jacket. No, no, no. no, no. Oh. I was holding... No, you were holding me. Yeah, you were I on was, the end. I was on the rod. Mike was on the end. <laughs> Dustin was holding Mike. And I was holding <laughs> Dustin. <laughs> Dustin's clothes were shaking because Dustin was so... It was... Nervous it was... Oh, yeah. It was like the adrenaline. Yeah. I was like, no it was way. an absolute rush. This it doesn't... a good fish. Yeah. When we saw it, it was a bass, and when you, it's, it's, right it's one of the, really prized it's fish. one, yeah, it's one of the most prized species here in the British Isles. And to catch them at this time of year, they, they're a bit less common this time of year, so October, winter. No but when you do get them, they're generally quite big. <laughs> they are one of the best eating fish that you can get. And this thing was a monster. And we, we maxed out the rod. We tried to lift it up on the line. We were on what twenty pound line? About twenty. About no, twenty twenty five pound line. It was no chance we were going to get it up. Unfortunately, the line just just frayed on the rocks and yeah, it went after, after like, what 10 minutes of 10 minutes or so yeah and it just went so there's no way there was, we didn't have any other options it was yeah we were out of options but look yeah. it's all but about the, the memories fine. we had a, yeah. an amazing time anyway it was all about the memories with Happy this one days. and we're gutted but we've got a fresh mackerel head out we saved the crab net just now yeah. so we've got the crab net back and uh yeah we, we we've we've managed to save a mackerel head we've uh we've got it out there and let's just hope that little bell rings again because yeah, that was something else with that little <laughs> bell going ding 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 ding. I think we were just sitting here having a chat we were, around no, this. Yeah, no, no, we were eating garfish. We were eating garfish, yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. We still got limpets uh, somewhere as well, but I'll check in with you guys in a minute. We'll probably cook up a bit more food and uh, yeah, try and calm our nerves. <laughs> right, we're gonna just uh, pretty much slow roast these. Just grill them over the fire, shell side down. 
uh, probably five, not even five, maybe five minutes. Until the meat comes away from yeah, the shell, so, and then we'll yeah, it just done. falls apart. Once it falls away, then we get rid of the gut sack, unless you, that's your thing and you like eating that. <laughs> uh, we'll get rid of the gut sack, and then we just eat them. But we can we can continue to feed this fire from this end. So get these straight up, and uh, no time, get them down the hatch. Yeah, they won't take long at all. There we go. <coughs> They've all come away from the shell like that they're was, all done. Oh, look at this. This is a limpet, and on this side yeah. of uh, the limpet is the gut sack, which you can, you can actually eat it with the gut sack on. Well, it's personally, you can always see it, the snail part of it there, but I personally like to just, I don't really eat it with the gut sack, so you rip it off, gut sack's off, get the gunk out and just shove it down the hatch. These are quite nice actually when they're done like that. Yeah, I'm gonna cook mine in a little bit. You got beer. a bit of beer in it, yeah. A little bit of they beer cook, like Dustin was saying earlier. Not the cooking... beer, by the way, <laughs> no less. They cook in their own juices in the shell, so it keeps all that flavour. in. when you boil them, they go really rubbery if you do it too long. Mm. I'm just gonna just boil them just for a minute or two, just to get a bit of that flavour in there. Are they good? Huh? Yeah, they're nice. No, they're nice. Good. Yeah, yeah, they are nice. Not much calories in them, but taste-wise, they've got a lovely sort of salty, salty taste. Like if you want, if you want to be it's real, they're food. just like it's just you wouldn't eat them out of, in your mouth. Yeah, not, you wouldn't eat them out of. They're uh, not calorie rich. Compared labor to, intensive. Compared to them and fish, you would eat fish by miles. You can yeah. never get them really tender, but. Yeah, but I, also I, pick, I like them. That's the best way to cook them. Or if you've got an open fire with the coals, yeah, that's the best way to cook them on the coal on a good yeah, bed of yeah. embers. I always think that's the best way. Fish, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have still got a little bit more kindling left. Gonna let the fire go out and uh, probably call it a night. To be honest. It's a lovely still night. There's no rain forecasted. There's absolutely no wind out there, which is lovely. So uh, I think we're all hopefully going to get a good night's sleep. But I've got I've got my strips all to, to sort my throat out, uh, and I will catch up with you guys in the morning. Good night. Good night. Well, chaps and ladies, thanks so much for watching this episode. It's been a blast, boys. <laughs> it's been a good one. Really good. We don't know yet if we've got the footage of this bass from yesterday. Hopefully we do. Hazy was on camera duty, so... So it's we're... probably not. <laughs> so it's probably just a blur. But to be honest, we've had an absolute blast. I hope you guys have enjoyed following us on these, uh, these two videos. And thank you so much for watching. Go and subscribe to Haze Outdoors. Go and subscribe to Bushcraft Tools. And I will see you guys real soon.